Welcome everybody to the next episode of the Cannabis Review. We are going around the world this time to Philippines to talk to one of the biggest experts in the Philippines, all thinking about cannabis, and his name is Jem Mark Mutia. He's part of the Philippine Society of Cannabinoid Medicine. How are you keeping today, Jem? Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Owen. Delighted it's to have you on. privilege to be on this show. Well, thank you very much, mate. It's delighted to have you on and help educate everybody in what's happening in the Philippines in the cannabis industry and to be able to bestow some information onto everybody. Can you maybe give everybody a quick little overview of how you came to be part of the Philippine Society of Cannabinoid Medicine? Well, uh, it uh, the Philippine cannabis movement started uh, was jump-started because of the uh, weed documentary in CNN by Sanjay Gupta that uh it uh was a uh, very famous here in the philippines so it basically catapulted the philippine cannabis movement and uh shortly after that time um my late sister was diagnosed with uh stomach cancer so uh that's when i started uh looking into this uh medicinal cannabis and uh that's when I started to uh, network with other like-minded doctors, and that's how the society began. Um, so currently, we are lobbying for the uh, legalization of uh, medicinal cannabis. Interestingly, here in the Philippines, since, two, since 2002, it's already legal to import uh, medicinal cannabis pharmaceutical uh, from abroad. Uh, but unfortunately, only one out of six applications have been granted. So, of course, uh, importation uh, from a, to a third world country is a very expensive idea and very uh, unsustainable. That's why uh, we are pushing for and advocating for uh, access of uh, full utilization of uh, cannabis here in the philippines okay thank you very much so the first topic i wanted to just do a quick overview of the philippines to go through a couple of different items to see how it's comparable to different parts of the world so you guys have a medical cannabis program you've been able to import uh, medical cannabis what is the list of ailments that sits on your medical cannabis program is it chronic pain, neuropathic pain, or is it Dravet syndrome and, and seizures and it's, it's restricted to that? So uh, the Philippines, of course, has uh, one of the most notorious uh, drug laws in the world. Um, they put uh, they put uh, uh, entry in there where you can uh, import uh, any dangerous drug uh, for medical use as long as it is approved uh, in the country of origin it's called the compassionate special permit but it turns out it's not that compassionate at all because uh the the requirements uh it's very difficult uh to uh first of all you have to find a neurologist and you and it is only for uh those with intractable epilepsy so in short uh only those with uh, Dravet syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome can uh, apply for a permit. And the uh, requirements are very difficult for a normal Filipino to attain. So uh, as for the qualifying condition, that's uh, the only condition, uh, intractable epilepsy. And only neurologists can prescribe it. So not so unlike uh, other uh, epilepsy medications where uh, any uh, doctor can prescribe uh, for uh, epidiolex uh, only neurologists can prescribe it so it's very very strict even though it's accessible on paper it's still uh, virtually inaccessible yeah, it seems to be the pattern across a number of territories in Ireland. It's very restrictive as well. We've got a pretty what seems to be an open cannabis program. But when you actually peel back the layers that a doctor has to get permission from a consultant, there's only a handful of diseases, five different diseases that fit on the program. So it seems to be that a lot of the countries are taking baby steps towards a fully fledged market. So you said only neurologists are allowed to prescribe over in Philippines. That's basically 
the only rule that they have. No regular practitioner, no regular doctor can, let's say, advise a patient to go to a neurologist to have to book appointments straight with a neurologist, is it? Uh, yes, uh, here in the Philippines, uh, you can go straight to a neurologist. Uh, unfortunately, it is very difficult to find a neurologist that is willing to or has a faintest idea about medicinal cannabis. So that's another hurdle to cross. And if you find a neurologist, uh, uh, the cost of importing Epidiolex, uh, uh, the cost of Epidiolex is uh, already like uh, almost one month salary of a normal uh, Filipino family. So they can only afford the medicine if they don't eat for a month. So uh, that's uh, one of the that's the main reasons why uh, we are really pushing for locally produced uh, uh, medicinal cannabis. Yeah, well, we saw from Jazz Pharmacals really recently published that they're on course to turn over a billion euro in epid epidiolex sales and did 163 million in the last quarter alone. So. I, does, I don't think that they seem to be making it a product or uh, that can be satisfying the world needs. Do you see a locally sourced version of a product like Epidiolex or Dravenol being created in your part of the world? Uh, yes, uh, there is a bill now. Uh, it has been, it's already the medicinal cannabis compassionate bill uh, was first filed uh, three presidents ago in uh, 2013. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't get passed, uh, but basically it's um, about uh, establishing medical cannabis compassionate centers, uh, which uh, controls everything from cultivation to manufacturing and dispensing. No? So if the, that, that's uh, what uh, is up in the Congress right now, so government produced uh, medicinal cannabis so uh we are seeing a bit of uh light right now because uh majority of the senators and majority of the congressmen um have uh allegedly uh supported it and uh our new president uh uh allegedly also uh is very supportive of it uh of course uh everyone uh, knows uh, what's happening in Thailand, what's happening in Thailand. Uh, the bill here, actually, the Philippines was the first to file a medical cannabis bill. But unfortunately, uh, Thailand has overtaken us. Uh, and in a blink of an eye uh, with the pandemic, they have gone from medicinal to now recreational. So uh, I think... Um, the, the Philippine policymakers uh, have noticed that. And also as well, when we talk with the other Southeast Asian advocates, uh, we know some of them, uh, just like in Malaysia where death penalty is uh, um, uh, applicable for cannabis, they I think they're about to do also a 180-degree turnaround. So from uh, death penalty to now to legalization. So... It's very uh, nice and, uh, of course, uh, it's long overdue. So, uh, yes, we see a locally produced, uh, not just CBD only, but uh, hopefully all the uh, medicinal properties of the plant can be uh, locally produced uh, in pharmaceutical grade. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Where you guys are positioned in the world, you've got Australia below you and Thailand above you to the left. Uh, do you think that they will have an influence on the Philippines government? Because Australia seems to have a pretty successful program currently running at the moment. Thailand, if they ended up going and enacting what they say, could be one of the biggest tourist hotspots when it comes to the industry. Do you think that they will have an effect on Philippines? Or is the pull of somebody like China in that area who have a pretty strict uh, no rule when it comes to even CBD will have more influence over those two other two territories? Uh, well, yes, uh, the Philippines is a very globalized country. Uh, we're one of the most hospitable to uh, uh, foreigners and others. That's why uh, 
we we are uh, aware of the of the uh, uh, developments uh, abroad. Um, that's why uh, we think uh, we are coming around. Unfortunately, uh, most of the uh, uh, literate population, I think, is open to the idea. Unfortunately, uh, the Philippines is still a uh, country uh, where majority is uh, in the uh, class D and E social economic class. So we, we have a lot of educating to do. Um, but, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, the previous president with the harshest drug laws, Rodrigo Duterte, he uh, publicly uh, claimed to use cannabis. Um, and uh, the former president, Gloria, so Gloria Arroyo also, which is now Speaker of the House, admitted. So I, the, Philipp the Filipino politicians and much of the... Uh, educated uh, open-minded uh, Filipinos they are uh, very willing but uh, uh, unfortunately uh, we have a lot of uh, educating to do as with the uh, uh, other countrymen of course the stigmatization of uh, cannabis the demonization is still uh, very present surprisingly the mastermind of the uh, if you're aware with the uh, modus of the uh, police before of the the previous uh, the previous chief of police now senator robert uh, i mean ronald de la rosa he's the mastermind of the uh, drug operations responsible of course for the thousands of uh, 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 allegedly uh, victims of drugs he uh, is now in support of uh, medicinal cannabis so it's very very uh it's very very uh inspiring and we hope also to do some modifications in the bill because again the bill now is already eight years old and uh we have seen uh it was patterned uh eight years ago and because of the developments uh around uh, the world we want to somewhat um uh see some modifications on it uh the lessons that uh, other countries learn we want to uh apply it into the uh current bill very good next topic i wanted to jump on to quickly was the cannabis and the central nervous system do you see the real breakthrough in medical cannabis coming from research that targets specific parts of the central nervous system utilizing cannabinoids well, uh, of course, uh, the CB1 receptor is the most abundant G-coupled protein receptor. is more abundant than a dopamine and opioid receptor. So uh, we really think this will uh, have an... Uh, uh, it will uh, really disrupt the uh, how we treat uh, neurological problems. And... Uh, uh, hopefully uh with other uh diseases as well um of course uh if one will study really cannabis we will know that uh it was used as a panacea or like uh for a cure-all um but uh it's not just uh we, the discovery of course of the endocannabinoid system is uh uh proof that uh it uh has a mechanism of action in this uh in these uh diseases so uh the neurological diseases will be a big part of it but uh also other diseases as well yeah that's it it seems uh, to be a case for of... a while Uh, yes yes owen thank you very much jen mark it's very much uh, appreciated and getting to talk to you and giving everybody a quick overview of the philippines hopefully we can get to touch base over the next six to 12 months and have a part two to this conversation and both ireland and the philippines have marched a little bit forward in their medical cannabis programs yes uh thank you so much uh really the 15 minutes is uh is a short time we can't uh, and uh, I really look forward to our 
uh, next uh, session. Thank you very much uh, for all the listeners. And of course, to you, Owen, thank you so much. Very much appreciated. For everybody who wants to keep up to date on the Philippine side of the medical cannabis industry, highly recommend you go to LinkedIn and follow Jim Mark Mutia. He's one of the top voices and sources of information from that part of the world. So, Jim, thank you very much again for joining us. All right. More blessings to you, Owen, and catch up with you soon. And you too, my friend. Till next episode, everybody. Oh, 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 oh